second. Okay, we're Facebook Live. Wow, isn't this cool? Look at the powerhouse of people that I have here. It's just amazing. I can't wait to introduce you all. Well, welcome everyone on the Facebook Live network and of course on the webinar itself. And of course, we'll have a chance to repurpose this video um, here oh, within two or three days, put it up on the brand new learning page that I have on my website, remarkableresults.biz slash learning. And every one of the town hall lives is there. Remember, watch it like a documentary, learn like a seminar. And I believe today will be um, as exceptional as the uh, previous 10 have been that we've done. Welcome to your website, Tactics to Improve Traffic and other tech talks with my group of brainiacs here. It's, it's amazing to have them all. Now, I'm going to introduce this group in alphabetical order. And this way, there's no, I want to be first. So let me see. Alphabetical order brings up Ryan Klo. Ryan's the owner of Dubworks in Cincinnati. Anyway, Ryan owns Dubworks Cincinnati, uh, an 18-year veteran in the automotive service industry. Ryan currently owns two specialized automotive service businesses located in Cincinnati. Did I say that? Yes. Ryan grew his enterprise from a single customer into a highly profitable business with 12 employees, 99% customer satisfaction, and he's automated his business so that his presence is not required. Oh, I love Most, that. Mostly. <laughs> at times it is. It's I love today. that part. Yeah. I love that part. Huh? <laughs> yeah. You can pull switches from 100 miles away. That's great. Yeah. Ryan currently consults for the Institute of Automotive Business Excellence, providing guidance to automotive businesses, including on-site evaluations, off-site coaching, business plan development, and one-on-one -on -one coaching to owners and staff. And for full disclosure, Ryan is a client of our guest, Todd Westerlin from Kukui. <laughs> now meet Doug Grills from AutoStream Car Care Center, five location, family owned automotive service facility in the greater Baltimore, Washington, DC area where you say you're having a snowstorm. Doug, along with his partner, Rick Levitin, has been around the service station business for over 25 years and have built their reputation by offering the best-in-class service to their customers. AutoStream car care technicians are all ASE certified and the shops are AAA approved. For full disclosure, uh, Doug is a client of Danny Sanchez from Auto Shop Solutions, who's also a guest. Next, Danny Sanchez, staying alphabetically, the owner and founder of Auto Shop Solutions. Now, Danny grew up spending countless hours working around his dad's auto repair shop in California, eventually taking over and uh, running the business himself. Auto Shop Solutions started in 98 when Danny founded Auto Web Solutions. The internet was, off to, uh, was starting to take off, and Danny took great interest in the powerful marketing benefits it could provide. Wow. Remember back then? What's Maybe. this stuff? Uh, you remember the sound of that uh, modem clicking, guys? Oh, amazing. Um, as a successful shop owner, Danny used Auto Web Solutions, as I said, to consult with other repair shops on their business and web presence. And in 2005, when Google launched, launched AdWords and changed its search engine to favor, favor local businesses, Danny saw a huge opportunity for the automotive industry to draw more clients from the internet. That's why you're here. And the reason Todd is here... Todd Westerlind, top left corner, CEO of Kikui, has been in the automotive industry for 28 years. He spent 15 years as an ASE certified smog technician in California and also spent two years at a dealership. In 2013, Todd joined Kikui, a marketing software company with a mission to improve technology for the betterment of people and businesses worldwide. As the CEO of Kikui, Todd is consistently studying, attending business classes, and consulting with shops all over the U.S., and uh, thanks for being here, team. Team thanks Tech. For having us. Team, yeah, thanks for having us. Team Tech. And, you know, I reached out to this group and said, hey, what are we going to talk about? And I got stuff back with acronyms. I don't even know what they mean. I mean, I am just clueless. SEO, pay-per-clicks, analytics, you got to be mobile, social. Can a shop owner keep up with all this stuff? Yeah, short answer. Yeah, not not easily by themselves, but but yeah, a business can keep up with this as much as they need to. But Danny, don't you have to have that that flavor? Don't you? You know, Ryan, I think of you. I mean, I think you're a pretty high tech guy, and you, this has got to be a favorite area you need to study and keep up on. 
And, and obviously you work with Todd. So you got to be able to pick up the phone and say, Hey, Todd, Doug, you got to pick up the phone and say, Hey, Danny, are we doing this? And what about that? Is that how it kind of works? Or d d does Danny and Todd, you go to your customers and say, you need to be doing this. Give me an idea how all this works. I would say that we have to be trusted that we are doing all of the things that are cutting edge and that we have to be doing. Like when the whole mobile friendly Armageddon hit, um, Danny and I were trusted that we had to go make all of our clients, you know, make sure they were mobile friendly. So I, that would be my perspective is that um, our clients trust us that we're the experts. I think it probably depends on the individuals too, because you know, some guys, everybody, being involved in it is critically important for all of us. I mean, I think you've got to be engaged in it. You've got to be paying attention to it. But, the, but your level of engagement really is a personal thing. And there might be some people that want to have a conversation with their website company frequently. And I fall into that category. I want to be constantly in contact with the people I'm working with. And then there are others that, you know, as Todd suggests, you know, you're, you're relying on an expert to do the things that need to be done day in and day out to really drive your results. Yeah, Carm, I think you said, um, you know, in the beginning about, you made a comment about time management, and I know how a lot of shop owners feel, and a lot of them are just going to be thinking, I don't have the time. How? I mean, I understand, and I believe, and I see all this, but how am I going to, where do I find the time to, to wear all these hats? And we could probably have a whole time ha or a town hall on time management. Um, you know, I think of, you know, Todd being a CEO, he's got to learn that, you know, he can't do everything himself, uh, knowing where to delegate and, and who to trust and um, making those decisions on when to, you know, when to hire the help and how much of a role you want to play. Um, you know, each shop owner has their strengths. Uh, I do bookkeeping. A lot of people, that's the last thing that they want to do. I do it, you know, hire it out for sure. And uh, I take a, you know, a, a semi-active interest in the design, but um you know, well, there's, there's a case more for automation too. So a shop owner has you know more time to kind of do that working on the business that you hear a lot about, you know, in these types of circles. But uh, I don't know, certainly doing your homework and, and getting with the right people. So you don't have to do as much work. So you can trust them. Uh, you know, you know, guys like we got here. I mean, that makes a big difference. Yeah. And all the, all those comments are, are right in the middle of the bullseye car. Um, there's, there's things that uh, shop owners and businesses need to trust us with. Uh, and they have some expectations that we're going to deliver on the promises that we make and being able to deliver the kind of traffic and the results and making the phone ring with new clients. And then in addition to, you know, uh, a great example is a client like Doug that we have that, that pushes us, that asks the kind of questions like, what else can we be doing? Or they, they, they talk about a problem that they have in the shop or their marketing processes and they're looking for new ways to reach out to new people. And those are challenges for us to find you know, how can we better uh, modify what we're doing online or included with our direct mail or other components and how can we m continue to melt uh, both the digital and the traditional marketing together to get better results and and everybody's really on the path of still figuring that out and those are good challenges that good shop owners give us that we can continue to innovate in the space um, so it's both we got to be trusted and we also got to keep innovating to see what's coming out and There's a lot of solutions outside our industry that we got to pay attention to as well So to both to Todd and to Danny here's a question when you get up every day and you go to work It's probably never Never a duplicate day. It's never Groundhog Day for you guys because of the way technology continues to change No very it's true. Yeah. yeah, that's that's yeah. a bullseye. <laughs> okay, there's another hit. And uh, for example, then Todd and Danny, uh, what's something new that you discovered this week that our industry needs to pay attention to? Um, this week. Oh, it was last week, or is something uh, something new that you guys are going to have to take a look at and say, hey, we got to bring this to the world. I, I would say. Uh, you know, there's been a, a lot more with um, watching the actual kind of conversion rate of the shop mm -hmm. and having a, a little bit of watching how the phone's answered and how quickly the search is actually uh, converted. And so what we're seeing is that Google is really starting to watch too. If somebody goes to one site, do they find what they need and do they kind of end that search there? So we've noticed just recently, and I actually said, I was, ah, it was about three weeks ago, 
uh, we really started focusing in even more on how do we make sure that that phone is answered correctly. And that's somebody like Ryan on the phone who's out there coaching. There's a lot of fantastic coaches out there. That really is the bottleneck of everything. We have a lot of technology to talk to about today, but who answers that phone? That right pinnacle doesn't move forward into somebody coming, maybe a new client or that search being completed. So you're saying if the, if the customer does a search for uh, auto repair in your, in your town and you are, you're doing all the things right to get up in the top of the list or at least maybe say the pole position, uh, it doesn't really matter if they don't call or, or click. What is it, Danny? If, yeah, so it's, um, you, know, I mean, you got to bring the people in before the phone rings, but Todd couldn't be more right. And then focusing on re answering the phone better can certainly make the results a whole lot better. But if you're talking about technology and the things that are coming and what we need to pay attention to, usually it's an outside force that usually brings some kind of technology change. And usually there's only one person that really brings the technology change that most of us have to deal with, and it comes from Google typically. And if you're going to talk about what the shop owners need to be kind of looking down the pipe of what's coming, Oh, there's a service that Google is right, right now testing on the West Coast called Google Trusted Services or Google Trusted Businesses or even Google Trusted Stores, it might be called. And what they're doing is they're testing for, for service type of shops uh, and not, not auto repair at the moment for Google to have actually a verified business that they will guarantee the results of. And those search results will actually come up first on the results. And it's a little bit of a, a pay per uh, search type of feature where you do have to pay for the clicks. But that's a huge game changer if Google decides to roll that out. And it's being tested right now. And Google doesn't uh, roll changes out nationwide. They test in certain markets to see how it performs. But if you're talking about automotive repair now becoming a, a possible Google trusted store, uh, that changes SEO, that changes pay-per-click, that changes the game completely for what it is on the internet. And are, are many of our customers or many of the shops out there going to qualify for those kinds of things? And who's going to be getting the volume of the traffic? So th that's a huge possible game changer that we're looking at within the next six months to 12 months. You know, I, I hate to go down that rabbit hole because it's new and it won't maybe affect us for a while. <laughs> But I love to chase little baubles, you know, those silver things that come up and say, ooh, ooh, let me have that. And so here's my question back at you, Danny. Um, is it, is it, is it going to be based on reviews that you know of and satisfied customers? And then if that is the case, then Google's the pusher. Am I right? It's, yeah, that's correct. And, and you, you, you can hit the nail on the head. Part of the qualifications will, is, will absolutely be your current reviews and how you're doing. So if it, if it wasn't already important, what the industry has been talking about for really the last couple of years about how critically important reviews are and making sure that you're consistently looking and not just reviews on your website or on one system, but everywhere, consistent everywhere in Yelp and Google and all the other places to where Google can then see you're a trusted uh, provider of the services yeah. that you have. Um, I mean, you may miss out on these opportunities. So uh, it's just like six, seven years ago, Carm, when I said, you know, you need to have a professional website and there's still, shops out there procrastinating. And then we talked about you got to get on board with social media just a couple of years ago and they're still procrastinating. Uh, this, all these things that are the lack of uh, movement and getting ahead on these things are going to come to a head at some point in time. This may yeah. be one of them. Yeah. You know, Ryan, uh, you're out there coaching people and I, um, I have a chance uh, to, to look at a lot of websites from the guests that come on the show. I look at a lot of websites from my prospects that would want to come on the show. And I'm frankly, I'm surprised that uh, there is uh, <laughs> I just don't see the level of quality that I see, especially with Kakui and Auto Shop Solutions coming out. Ryan, what do you tell your, your, your clients that you see? Um, I mean, you know, if we're looking at a entire marketing strategy, I mean, obviously, you know, your website's going to be a centerpiece in that strategy. And I think, you know, trying to find a company that can, can handle several aspects of it. I mean, years ago, you just had to have a website and then you had to have search engine marketing. And like Todd said, it's, it's changing often. So it's, it's hard to keep up with. I think, you know, you really have to have some connections, you know, to companies who will help uh, and take on some of that burden. <clears throat> and I think it seems like a burden, you know, with more and more tasks, you know, like posting on social media, for example. I mean, you know, we're fortunate to have someone here who's who has a marketing background and can kind of help us with that. But not everybody's shop has that. So some shop owners do it. Sometimes the marketing company can do it. Uh, I think there's just a lot of a lot of information out there. And um, <clears throat> yeah, I think knowing who to choose um, 
you know, is, is a big part of that. And, uh, and, and training. Um, in fact, uh, the gentleman at my shop that does marketing, we just went to a local marketing class, nothing automotive related, just specializing in social media. So we signed up for a class. It was like a two hour class. We drove an hour to another nearby town and it was a really fun day. Actually, I think it was a half a day. Um, and you know, left there feeling like, ah, I really need to be doing more with YouTube. We don't really have a lot of YouTube videos. So, um, if you have a culture of training involved uh, and that kind of involves yourself as an owner, it can help. It doesn't mean that I'm going to go do it all, but it increases my awareness of it. So, sorry, I think I, I jammed a lot of things in there. No, that's okay. You did. And, uh, you know, Doug, I'm not sure if this is the right question for you, but I opened up the show by saying SEO, pay-per-clicks, analytics, mobile. I think we covered mobile. You just brought up social, Ryan, which was cool that I kind of classify YouTube in a little bit. But you know, SEO, 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 does, does the average shop owner who doesn't have a really good site know what SEO really is and how it impacts your business? And, and Doug, the SEO work that you have done on your site, does it really help? Absolutely. Um, you, you need to be looking at the, the factors that drive people to your website. So you have to know what the sources of these folks, you know, where they're coming from, what they're looking for, what devices they're using to get to your website. Um, and you can, you know, when you have access to all that information, then you can kind of try to refine or hone in on the things that are, that are really working for you and driving traffic to your site. So it's critically important that you're looking at that or somebody's looking at that and at least feeding it back to you so that you have a feel for the things that are working and the things that aren't working. You know, quickly too, if I can jump back to the previous topic about sort of the changes and some of the things that I think we're looking at. Um, you know, like Danny mentioned, I mean, Google is the player and, and they're, the, they're a moving target, right? So they're constantly moving the, the bullseye. And so it's a, you know, you've got to constantly be, or, or you or your website company constantly looking at that. I think one of the other important changes that we're going to see or that we already are seeing is that Google understands that they want to keep you on the search engine. And so what they'd like to have happen is when someone goes in and searches for auto repair in a, in a particular area, Google wants to keep you there. They want to keep you on that search page. So they're trying to provide as much information as they can, whether it's directions, website links, reviews, the map. And, and we're probably going to see a lot more of that where Google's putting a lot of effort into keeping you on that page. And of course, that obviously affects the strategy that you would have for your own website because people may not even get to your website now. They may just be on the Google search result, get all the information they need, click through to you, and, and off we go. You know, to your point, Doug, do you think, does Google put YouTube, your YouTube videos up on the search page today? Uh, they, they can. I mean, in other words, that is something. I mean, one of the things that we talk about, you know, when you talk about YouTube and video, uh, millennials in particular are big consumers of video. And so like when you look down in the future, you know, they're looking for content, video content that we sort of traditionally, even in internet marketing, didn't put as much time or energy around. Um, but I think going forward, it's going to be a, an increasingly important part of what we do to try to get attention or get noticed, if you will, on the, on the web. Okay. So th thank you for that, Doug. Uh, listen, the, the whole concept of the, the town hall forum is, is to get information out to the industry. And when this video is replayed, I want to be able to be, to impact many of the service professionals that just haven't jumped on board with good uh, internet based marketing, or let's just call it having a good website. And <clears throat> If they haven't gotten themselves a provider, a marketing company like a Kukui or an Auto Shop Solutions, is it possible because they're afraid of, oh, SEO costs me money, pay-per-clicks calls me money, you know, the, the ad stuff, that all costs me money. What is an average spend for a shop owner that wants to do it right? I, I, I think there's. Uh, I know it's loaded. So, well, so a, help bring it down to <laughs> bring it down to my level. And give, and give me something. So, so the answer that, that question is uh, there's a wide range, Carm. Every shop is different, and there's no one size fits all that fits for everybody. And, and certainly, you would never suggest that a shop in a in, in a community or a township that has only fifteen thousand people would need the same level of marketing as somebody who's in uh, the middle of one of the more more 
bustling areas of Maryland like uh, like Doug is. So uh, for each shop, it, it really is one of those things, much like what Todd said earlier, they've got to trust somebody to kind of lead them down the path of how much marketing you need. But it, besides, besides what drives um, uh, for your area and your market area for need, it's competition-based. So you could be in a metro area. I mean, it's possible to be in uh, Miami, Florida. I'm, and I'm not saying this is true because it's not true, but if Miami, Florida had only one repair shop in town, well, then you would need a lot of work on the internet to get yourself into position. But there's, a, there's more than one, there's a thousand. So you've got to compete with all those people. So, I mean, to answer the question, now that I've kind of laid some of the groundwork, uh, there are sh some shops that need only spend a couple hundred bucks, maybe even some that don't even need to spend that, maybe under a hundred dollars works just fine. And there are shops who, you know, by the nature of the, what they have designed in their growth and where they need to go, they may need to spend two, three, four thousand uh, dollars based on how many locations that they have. And it's not uncommon for a typical location to spend anywhere from two hundred to fifteen hundred dollars per location in order to uh, drive the kind of marketing that they need. So it's a huge range, but it really is competition based. And who do you want to battle uh, to get in that position? Now, traffic is valuable. Excellent one, answer. Uh, one Thank more com one more comment yeah. to go with that, and I apologize for dominating this question. I, and I, I promise I'll shut up for a minute. But one of the issues that I do like to talk about regularly is that this dollar amount is the same dollar amount that every shop used to spend on yellow pages. Yep. <laughs> so you know, where yeah. we got to, where we got to, we used to spend seven hundred dollars to a thousand dollars in yellow pages, <laughs> but now I'll only spend two hundred and fifty on my internet marketing. <laughs> I have no idea where that gap came from, right? So it, it, this is not a foreign number to the industry. It's just that that dollar amount went away. There was such a big time gap between anything else we could spend money on in our industry. And now that seems like such a high dollar amount to invest in. And I, I, I don't know where it comes from, but that's what we need to get past. Well, you know, what's so interesting about yellow. It was one of the most painful things I ever did every year as a small businessman. And it was as painful as buying a car you know, yellow. And today, and I'm not sure, yeah, if you put in a, a number that you could track, uh, today, what you spend on the web has to have some of the most discerning ROI numbers you could possibly ever ask for, for the money you spend. Am I right? True. Absolutely. Wow. So, um, you, you kind of concur with that, Todd, about the, what the average spend would be and the reasons? Um, just in a shop in Austin, Texas, and he was spending $20,000 a month on AdWords, $20,000 a month. It was, it, it was such a long conversation to actually understand the why to start with. Um, and, and just that really is always kind of the, the top I've ever come across. $20,000 in AdWords a month. I just kept asking a month. Okay. A month. Yes. A month. Um, so I, I think also, Along with that, there is a lot of, there's some wasted money out there too. So I think it's very important to be able to understand where things are coming from, what actually drives the right people to that phone, and making sure that those dollars are, are definitely maximized. Because, the, you know, whoever sold this particular gentleman 20, wasn't anybody on the phone, anything, I, I think it was his own thing, $20,000 in AdWords, I, I, I don't think the ROI was there. Got it. So, um so it, 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 like I said, it's a pretty long loaded question. You can have another time hall just on, just on that. Yeah. You know, thank you for, answers. thank you for that. And oh, by the way, Ryan volunteered just about five minutes ago to be on the town hall for town time management. So uh, I, I, Congratulations. I <laughs> made it a note of that. See, I have a really keen ear for uh, people that, <laughs> that do that. Right. You're absolutely right. It is, it is on the, it is on the chart to do. In fact, uh, Wow, we've got the next eight weeks prepared. In fact, you know what we're doing next week? I have to, I have to stop and tell you. Next week's town hall show is on what keeps you up at night. <laughs> Saw that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what keeps you up at night? Mm -mm 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 -mm. And, I, and I usually ask that question to, you know, my, my normal entrepreneur interviews. And some of them say, you know, some off the wall things. But many of them say nothing. And obviously, I won't have those people on my show, but we'll have we'll have people that are that 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 really are engaged with that. So, website design. Um, there was this thing called something 2.0 a while back, and then I can't remember what that was, but it, it really allowed I, I think websites to get beautiful, for for the lack of a of a better term. 
very graphical, very interactive. What's the trend going on with web design, team? You know, one of the things I would, I would say kind of, you, you discussed kind of making sure that somebody came across um, or, or came out of the town hall with just some real knowledge. Yeah. And I think um, I'll step back to just a basic and then just kind of hand it, hand it back to everybody. Um, you know, mobile friendly is something, it's a tool that you can actually go and research right through Google right now. And so if you're listening to this and you haven't popped your website into that Google tool and just look, if you're not mobile friendly and you're not, you, you need to make some calls. Um, another real critical one too is just, is the phone number above the fold? And meaning that it's, it's you know, it, it's very, very prevalent and that you can find the phone number. I, uh, you know, even two weeks ago, I came across shops, at the phone number, we're looking, I couldn't find the phone number. <laughs> and I'm going, you know, we still in that place. Uh, I mean, we, we talk so at such a high level sometimes. You have to, sometimes you can't forget the, the gentleman out there whose phone number is not to be found. The website is not mobile friendly. And, you know, they have no brand too. You know, you look at it, um, Doug and Ryan's brand is very, very defined, very clear. I can, I can picture both of their brands in my head right now. That's success. It's 100% success. Okay, that's brand. So going back kind of to the, the beginning, um, those would be kind of some things for the shop to start consider, considering. Can you even find my phone number? Are you even mobile friendly? And do you even have a brand? And after that, then we're talking to some, some really advanced users like Doug and Ryan. And uh, Danny, do you agree with Todd on that? Yeah, I absolutely do. And uh, it, I mean, the question that, that speaks to a, a really, Todd speaking to the largest volume of shops that are out there that have yet to really kind of made that shift into, um, I, I need to put my internet marketing first and um, like as my first contact and what I'm going to be developing as far as driving traffic. So I mean, couldn't be, he's speaking to the masses. And for the people who are maybe a little bit more advanced than that, who are kind of for that next level, um, you know, we're, we're kind of getting past the point of just mobile friendly. And what we're designing now is really mobile first. So most, there, most of our shop owners now are seeing more than 50% of traffic coming in from mobile sites uh, or mobile uh, devices first. So now instead of de de designing the sites to look good on a desktop, we're designing them to look good on a mobile uh, device first and then adapting them to a desktop. So it's completely reversed around um, and it's a little bit more of, uh, more of an advanced uh, concept. But again, the shop owners who are just getting on board, these are things that you need to pay attention to. If you're going to uh, buy a website, just like Todd said, it's got to be mobile friendly and even more so. Uh, maybe you want to take a good hard look that the mobile version of it isn't just friendly and friendly to Google and it looks okay and you can find a phone number. No, no, that it's actually designed to convert and it looks great and it's got great images on it and the design layout, it drives them through a process and you're, you're driving them into your sales funnel. Um, I mean, these are, these are the fundamental changes in the technology as we continue to get more mobile. Ryan, uh, how much is coming into your uh, company through mobile? Um, I mean, I think the stats, you know, vary on different sites, but I think, I mean, and Todd might be able to say better on the industry trend, like 50% of people, you know, are looking or more sometimes are looking, you know, for businesses on their phone. Yeah, that's what I he mean, said. I'm, yeah. I'm a desktop guy, but, um, I'm at a computer all day. I think a lot of people, it's just easier on their phone. Um, and, and I did want to say just on the, on the subject of design, I mean, I'm a little bit of an art background. So, I mean, I love good design and I would, there are several websites out there that are beautiful websites. I think Doubleworks is on its fourth website. And some of our previous um, websites could have won an award for design, meaning they look good. Uh, but one particular company, um, I got into a discussion when we were building the website. And the answer I kept getting back was, but this converts better. But this converts better. And I'm like, but I want to do this. And I just think it's worth mentioning to not forget that the website's a tool mm -hmm. as much as design is wonderful. And I love design and it's, it's great to have this look and your brand of course is very, very important. Let's not forget what the website's there. It's there for analytics. I want to look and see how many people found it and then how many people visited it. And then when people were on that site uh, and the last time I made a switch, my conversion probably doubled and tripled. And that was the real eye opener for me. Like, cause the website before wasn't, 
you know, not as, as pretty and the, maybe the search engine optimization was okay. But like what Todd said about having the phone number up high, I mean, there are above the fold, like referring to a newspaper fold, like when you pick up the newspaper, whatever is on that first section, that's what you see. And they call them calls to action. If you're going to fill out a form to contact us, if you're going to look at reviews, if you're going to call the phone number, uh, you know, you got to put that stuff out there first. So yeah, just remembering that conversion matters. And at that point, I let the, the web designers do that. I don't get too much of that. I love your site, Ryan. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So there's, so you're saying it's working, but from my perspective, I also see a lot of great design. I, I see a lot of great, uh, uh, I want to, I want to, I want to go to this place. They seem to, your impression, your brand, pretty strong, pretty strong. And Carl, Car, not to interrupt and between there, but there's a careful language that you really need to use when you're talking about websites that are working. So when we, when we as an automotive repair, automotive industry, collision, everybody industry, when we think things are working, that means you go out to the car, you start it, and it works, right? Meaning it's functionality. When people look at websites, they say it's working, meaning you open up a browser and look, there's my website, it's working. That's not the same thing that we talk about when we say a website is working. Just like Ryan is saying, making, saying that it's working means that it's converting. People are finding it. They're, they're actually looking around the website enough to say, I want to call these guys. They look like somebody that I want to do some service work on my car with. That's working. The phone is ringing. And, it's, uh, and that's almost like a, a terminology change that we need to change from back from calling us mechanics to technicians to whatever it is we're going to be calling ourselves next. But uh, it's that kind of differentiation between, yeah, my site's working. No, it's really not. It's just functioning in the internet, but it's not bringing anybody in. So, Doug, um, you've looked at a couple of months of statistics and you're not happy with quote unquote conversion rate. And, and is, what do you do? Do you, actually, do you actually get that cold sweat and say, it's not working? Um, we don't get that a lot, frankly. But I, but I will tell you that um, anytime that you're concerned about conversion, you know, a big part of it is how are you engaging uh, with, with different, different areas of your business on the web, for example. So, you know, guys were talking before about reviews. Reviews are critically important to driving activity to your to your site and and to getting a high ranking in Google when people are out looking for the, the goods and services that you offer. So we put a tremendous focus on generating as many five star reviews as we can, and and that's across all platforms. Like as as Danny mentioned earlier, so Google reviews or Yelp or Angie's List or Facebook reviews um, engagement. Uh, engagement in these other social media platforms that that's a critically important part of it too because you're looking to engage customers you have to be engaged in that process so you want to have you want to have a robust you know constantly updating and 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 putting posts out that that sort of give your customers potentially information about you and gives you a gives you some personality if you will um, so that when people are out looking for who they're going to choose as a provider um, you're one of those top of mind people that that uh, that they're going to be interested in and they're going to search for. You uh, you said reviews. I know that was one of your great talking points. I'm so glad you brought it up. Uh, any tactics to get uh, these five stars? Well, here's the thing. You know, it's funny. I'm I'm glad you asked because as I've mentioned, it's a big big focus for us. I mean, here's the here's the first part. The first part is that the heavy lifting is creating that exceptional experience to begin with. Right. In other words all of your people have to be intensely focused on making sure that you're wowing everybody that comes through the door. And you're, you're essentially creating a, a situation where, you know, that what you're offering the customer is if I provide you an exceptional experience, I'd love it if you, you know, get online and tell people about it. And so you've got to deliver that experience first and foremost. I mean, asking, you know, asking seems like the hard part. Frankly, for me, asking is the easy part. It's delivering that exceptional experience that's, that, that's really the challenge. Sure. And then once you're doing that consistently, um, the asking part becomes a lot easier, frankly. Um, but it, it's critically important. And, and for us, we're constantly talking about reviews. I mean, I send out emails every day about people in our organization that are generating five-star reviews. So that's it's like that's something that we want to make sure that it's a focus for everyone in our company up to and including me as the owner of the business. So are you taking that and bragging on that in Facebook? 
Let, let me let me brag for Doug for a second because I've done some review marketing and I've talked to a lot of people and I had a chance to speak with Doug, I don't know, maybe a month or two ago and he might have the highest number of reviews in the shortest period of time, at least that I've witnessed and I do believe him. Um, he opened up a fifth shop and he already had a brand behind that, but I think you can give me the exact number, Doug. It was well over 100 Google reviews in 30 or 60 days, some really short period of time. And so of course I'm very interested. Yeah. How do you do that? Because I think a lot of people don't really think that they can get that done. And yeah, we have uh, not, not, not user generated ones. Actual customers made those. Yeah. Real, yeah. Real, right, not, real not ones. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I appreciate that. Yeah. We opened a, we opened a fifth location and you know, certainly Danny and his team had done a lot of things to make sure that we were locked and loaded for the day that we opened our doors. So, I mean, literally the day we open our doors, you Google search us and we were right there. You know, we were, our listing was there. People could find us. So that, that was part of it. That was sort of the, the front end, the setup, but, you know, creating that exceptional experience and then asking customers for the review. So just to update you on the numbers, it's been open five months. We have 165 Google reviews and the average rating is 4.9. So, um, you know, we were very, very focused on it. We're very pleased with that result. And obviously when people are new to, we're new to the area, they're new to us and they're saying, geez, where would I like to go? You know, if you see 165 reviews of a business that's been open for five months, you're thinking, man, something's going on there. Mm -hmm. oh, no. Something good is going on there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Something good. <laughs> Well, great. Thank you. Hey, it's near, it's a little past the bottom of the hour and I always nicely stop and tell everyone when, what went on this week. Today we released a brand new episode, episode 208, we, which we do every Friday and Tuesday in the audio form. And it was an exceptional, it's going to be one of my top 10 favorites of all time so far. I interviewed Bob Greenwood, Bill Haas and Barry Barrett all at once at Vision. And I have to tell you, it was transparent, honest, it was funny, it was profound, it was serious. It's all about how a service professional becomes the CEO of their business and how hard it is to become a CEO. You have to work at it. So these, uh, these three business coaches and trainers hit it out of the ballpark. It's a real long episode, so I suggest you may want to listen to it in two stages if you have to, but it'll be one of your favorites, I believe, in this past Tuesday. Scott Gonzo Weaver, Gonzo's Toolbox. We were also at Vision. We recorded episode 207, What a Hoot, because Gonzo has an interesting, funny flair on how he looks at our industry. So that was that, that one on this week. So, hey, thank you so much here. We're talking about... Um, Websites, tech talk, you know, how, tactics to improve. Uh, so far, you're all delivering. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. High um, five, right? High five. Yeah. yeah. High, five. High, five. High five for you. Yeah, high five. Right. <laughs> so what is this click through, a uh, click per through rate? I don't know anything about this click through rate. What's, what's that all about, team? So well, pay for clicks. Go ahead. Uh, there's a couple different ways to look at, and there's a couple different technologies and a couple different um, ways that things can be done out there. Um, click through rate, it, really, when you're looking at it, is somebody has come to the site and they've, you know, they've clicked all the way through to to a point that we can track. And they have converted. So there's a lot of things you can up, kind of what what you want to call those impressions. Impressions are one portion, but click-through rate, very important. So um, on our side, one of the things that, that's very important is we actually integrate with 61 different systems out there, and we can verify the click-through rate all the way through that the consumer has actually, <clears throat> all the marketing that we've done, they've gone all the way through, and they've actually spent, kind of spent money in the shop. And so – Really important, it's it's kind of that journey along the bridge from when all that marketing started, all the great marketing everybody on the phone is doing, all the way to that consumer becoming a brand new customer. Now, there's some technical aspects of it, but I want to make sure everybody kind of listening, your click-through rate, are they getting there? Are, are you generating new folks that are coming in? When you say you could see it all through the phases, um, explain that to me, someone. 
uh, visiting, you can look at Google Analytics, for example, and see people that visited the website. And then there's a tracking phone number on the website, um, which uses caller ID. So then I can see that that person actually filled out a contact form or made a phone call. And then as Todd said, they integrate with the management system. And then you can see that person actually has an appointment at the shop. And ultimately, you can see based on that phone number tracking, that phone number is now in the database and has actually spent money. I mean, this is enterprise level technology that five, 10 years ago was not available to small businesses. I imagine larger businesses had it, but for us to know the real ROI, I mean, you know, I think Yellow Pages has had a tracking number for a long time, but I just think it's a real, it's a, we're in the information age and there's a, a lot of advantages that we can use if we're paying attention to it. And I mean, having Google analytics, having tracking phone numbers, having dashboards where you can look and see and measure the changes that are happening. But, but yeah, like Todd said, you, you can follow that customer from when they were browsing to when they came to your site to when they called you to when they spent the money and, and all that. So is it possible, and, and, and help me understand, that when Google said, hey, listen, spend money with me and, and you know, let's, let's figure out or let's, let's put you up somewhere on top and whatever AdWords is, did they have to create analytics in order to prove to you that the money you were spending with them worked? No. No, it, 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 they, yeah, they create, now there's some truth to that, but no, Google created Google Analytics so that businesses can improve their online marketing. And they, and their Google uh, Analytics really is the most robust way of tracking uh, your performance online uh, by a long shot. And the next, the next available option costs hundreds of thousands of dollars. And some would argue that it's still not as robust as Google Analytics. So now Google created that and gives it away for free so that marketers like us and like Ryan and Todd and Doug, so we can all use the information to try and make things better. The, the, thing, the, the thing you have to pay attention to is that there's different segments of each component of your marketing and it has a different success element to it. So uh, you, your click-through rate, which you started with, is the conversion of people on the actual Google page. So when you land on the page, there's an impression. And the amount of people who click on it is then your click-through rate. And you can think about it the same as when you send a direct mail piece out and how many people actually call after direct mail piece. That's the conversion rate. And like direct mail, 1% is actually not bad for a conversion of people calling uh, from a direct mail. Click-through rate is much the same. Uh, we do run into uh, keywords and are able to perform at a little bit higher level to be getting a 2 to 4% uh, click-through rate, even 5% is considered extremely successful, but you're also getting thousands, maybe tens of thousands of impressions, and then it drives to a click-through rate. The important part of looking at the click-through rate is to be looking at the different keywords that are performing. So it's when you're running a pay-per-click account or an AdWord account, it, it needs to be monitored on a regular basis because you're looking for keywords and also ads that are performing and creating a better click-through rate. And it's just like, we're, I mean, the whole purpose of this town hall is how do you get better traffic, right? And how you get higher quality traffic, how you increase your traffic, is by constantly looking, evaluating, and modifying your ads, your ads, uh, your ads, your ad spend, the keywords that you're using, and your quality score is connected to how much effort that you put into your paid search account. So, I mean, you're, when you talk about driving quality traffic, this is something that you have to stay absolutely on top of. And then, of course, as you drive through more, then of course we can track how many people actually end up in the shop based on the phone number. We could take a look at that number, but this is one of those like key, key indicators that you're just, the phone's not going to ring unless we get the click-through rate working properly from the beginning. Just like we were talking about the website and, and having people see a great design. This is yeah. the next step yeah. in the process. And so I have a you just scared the heck out of me. And if I, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, my God, if I, if, if I was uh, watching this show, and I'm saying, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm okay right up to this point. But what I think I, I know and, and I'm confident of is that a Kakui or an Auto Shop Solutions is actually my partner in doing all of this, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So I don't really have to, I don't have to know all that stuff that you just said. I don't have to worry about a lot of this stuff. I just need to be a partner in it, right? Ryan? Yeah, there, yeah there, that's... that's Go ahead, Doug. That's a great point. Um, I think there's something to know about everybody on the phone um, in the companies that, that we're all working with here um, on the on the phone. I mean, in, in the town hall, um, you know, both of our companies are partners. 
And as you look out there, I did some research, Danny, just to check to see if anybody uh, came up to our level this morning of Google Premier Partners, because wouldn't it be magical I get on here and somebody did yesterday, but no. Um, we're the only two Google Premier Partners in the industry. And if you understand what we have to go through to actually achieve that, that's 18 months of verifiable data that Google can actually look through that the companies have, have been able to prove our success. We have to get certified in AdWords. They're huge, huge. And on top of that, I mean, it's, it's interesting because all the tools that we received from being Google Premier, really a Google Premier partner. Very, very important, that whole phrase. Um, some of those tools just show us that we just know what we're doing. They didn't really give us necessarily whole keys to the kingdom. They kind of yeah. said, okay, great. Congratulations. We're going to give you this award. You know what you're doing. Great. But you know, it's important. You know what, you know what Carm? Every shop owner. And you know what? I, I don't know Ryan extremely well. I know Doug pretty darn well. I, I could pretty confidently say this about them and, and, and many other thousands of shop owners. They all have the ability to learn to do this just like we have over the years. It, it, it's just one of those things. If you live in the world, you can figure it out at sooner or later. But understand, uh, people like Todd and I have been at this for a little while. Um, we've got it. We've got it pretty down to a science, at least we're close to anyway. Although I often say we just feel like we have a tiger by the tail because there's things change so fast. But but if you're trying to run a business and try and do this all at the same time and stay in tune. Uh, then you know what? You're going to be like that twenty thousand dollar a month pay per click guy in Austin, Texas, <laughs> and, and he's burn he's burning a lot of cash that just doesn't need to be spent. There's something wrong with that. So there, there's there is a way of doing it in a way where you're being efficient with your your cash and your marketing dollars, and, and using people that are really good at what they do. Ryan, you were about ready to say something a few mi minutes back. Um, yeah, I think just something that that Danny said um, about the looking at the AdWords stuff and. Yeah, like what are you going to do as an owner or what is the marketing company going to do? And I, I think a lot of this, the marketing company will do it for you, but I still like knowing about it and using the AdWords for data. I'll just give a quick uh, example that worked well for us. Uh, we found a lot of people at the Volkswagen Audi shop wanted to know how to how to reprogram their remote or how to replace a remote in their key battery. And once we knew that because of pay-per-click campaigns, because in organic searching, I don't think Google gives you the, the, the data anymore. They used to a long time ago maybe, but pay-per-click, you can see what people searched and how they found you. So then once we knew that that was a high ranking search term that people would, would look for, uh, then we were able to say, create a landing page for that or do a blog for that um, or just, you know, otherwise kind of, you know, cater to that to make sure that when people search that, that we come up. Um, and so, yeah, as an owner, I mean, it's, it's kind of like, I want to know, I don't want to actually do all this stuff, but it is good for me to understand it. So that when I'm talking with somebody, my marketing company, that I understand what they're saying. And, you know, how do you get that knowledge? I don't know, watching town halls like this, going to <laughs> classes, reading, you know, trade magazines, just making yourself aware because there's what you know, what you don't know, and then there's that what you don't know, you don't know. And that's the stuff that, well, I don't I can't even think about it. So, um, so yeah, just knowing enough to be dangerous, I guess. Excellent. I, and I would chime in too, because I, I agree. I think Ryan makes an excellent point. I mean, one of the things you have to really be thinking about is that when people are out there looking for information, Google is trying to identify who has the most relevant answers. And, and they're also, they're increasingly putting more focus on local, right? So they want to know who in this market or who in this geographic area has a great answer for the information that this customer is looking for. And so the example that Ryan just gave is, is an excellent one. Anytime you can get some insight into what people are searching and, and, and then if you're able to be the guy that can provide those answers, you're going to come up in the search. Google's going to find you and those customers are going to find you and they're going to reach out to you. So gang, how important is writing a blog and having it on my website? All depending, yeah, all depending on your goals. Um, it may not be important at all, and it could be critically important to your success. It, again, it, go, it depends on competition. But I, I, in the end of the day, I, the short answer is it'll never hurt you. If you write quality content, it's not, never going to do you any harm to continue adding great content. But if there's something specific that you want to go after, if there's an area of the market that uh, hasn't been covered just yet and you're able to go after a, a, a long tail keyword um, in, the, in the form of a blog and drive more traffic, fantastic. Okay, so stop, great. stop, long tail keyword. Whoa, versus <laughs> short tail keyword. See, there are all these 
These new things I'm learning. You, Danny, what you is can't, that? You can't, you can't talk uh, tech talk and not have some like <laughs> terminology in it. Okay, I got this. It's a, I can't fix your brakes without talking about calipers and other Perfect. things like that at some point in time. Right? You, just, you just laid it right up there. Go, go. Right. Uh, learn it. <laughs> So yeah, when you talk about you talk about long tail keywords versus short tail keywords. Long tail keywords are basically more words in a in a certain uh, search phrase that you might have, and it might be uh, it might be BMW uh, cross drilled rotor replacements or something along those lines, and that would be more of a, uh, a long tail keyword. Whereas a short tail keyword might be something just like a BMW brake repair. And the idea would be is if there's enough people in your community who are looking for cross-drilled rotors and you want to be a specialist when it comes to performance add-ons, where it comes to BMW or Mercedes or whatever car you work on, you might be able to grab some of those um, some people, take them back to a blog or a, a landing page that talks specifically about how you have this solution, then you might be able to convert some of those people into customers. So it's drawing traffic in very, very specific areas um, and trying to uh, capture them uh, and bring them to your website. So yeah. it's a it's a strategy. Okay, I love it. And here's what just came to my mind: If I was about ready to become a hybrid specialist, I would probably go to my my Kikui or my Auto Shop Solutions and say, "Can you help me drill down for all of that?" And you'd have the same you'd have the same question being: Do you want to go after long tail keywords or do you want to go after short keywords? Because the short keywords are just hybrid repair, and it'll be a pile of people who will just type that in, or maybe not even just type that. Some of them don't believe they're hybrids or anything but cars, but that would be a short tail. And then somebody might say Prius battery replacement at two years, um, uh, environmentally friendly. I mean, who knows how many things they'll type in? And then the idea is to determine whether or not there's enough of that search traffic to make the effort worthwhile. And what you're talking about really is content marketing, Carm. This is another element of marketing that has a very specific purpose. It's not just blog writing. You're talking about content marketing. And it can be expensive uh, because you've got to do the keyword research to see what people might even be looking for to see whether or not it's worth investing the time and money to create that content to try and drive them to. Otherwise, creating content, uh, you, you, there's no harm in it. But if you want to actually see some traffic from it, you got to look and see what niches are not being served. And then keep in mind, too, that we're, we're talking about, I, I say a keyword like BMW cross road rotors. That's a national search. That's not localized. That's not hyper-local. That's a national search. And for most of the shop owners who are watching this, it does them no good. Right. Until I put in the words BMW cross road rotors in Apex, North Carolina. Now we're talking about a local search, somebody right. that's right. getting car repaired. So that localization versus that national level is what makes content marketing sometimes less attractive for a repair shop because they're also hyper-local. We're only trying to draw business for most shops for about maybe 10 to 15 mile radius. Many of them are only five. And how many people are going to search for that content in that in that mileage radius? Got it. Thanks, Danny. Hey, look at gang. Uh, before the top of the hour, um, let me throw this quote at you I found from Albert Einstein. Are you all sitting down? Good. <laughs> it has become appallingly obvious that our technology has exceeded our humanity. <laughs> yeah, I feel that way sometimes. Albert yeah. Einstein. So he was a genius way back then. He actually yeah. did see the, see the crazy future that we're in. Um, I, I want to, uh, I have this crazy idea of asking a little bit about social. Doug, I know you're really big in that and, and maybe you could all comment on that as a go around the table and, and let's do a summary. But I, I don't think we covered social as much and how important that is to your brand and, and web presence. Uh, and, and if you don't want to talk about that, we'll just go around the room and uh, give me your final comments. Thank you all so much for being here. Uh, when I think back, man, this, this hour, it's not, we're not over with yet, but it went fast. I learned a lot. So thank you for bringing your expertise to the show. Let's start with you, Doug. Well, okay. So to address your, uh, your question about social, I think social is critically important for engagement with your customer base, right? So um, the way I look at social is that you have the opportunity to really communicate to people your, your brand, your culture, who you are, what, you, you know, what your interests are, what, what things are happening in your stores day to day. So, I mean, I think, I think social is a critically important part of our of the mix today, and it's going to probably be a more and more important part of the mix going forward. Um, and then, you know, and then in general, um, you know, to me, online marketing is is about engagement, 
And so whether you're engaging with your customers by, you know, through those social media channels or through your website or through the reviews that you're generating across various platforms, um, that's really the key to driving people to the phones and to your doors. And then as a couple of the panelists mentioned earlier, what you do when that phone rings is critically important and what you say and how you communicate with, with customers because you've spent all this time and all this energy getting people to the door on the phones and now, now what are you doing? The beauty of it is as a marketer, just one last thing. I mean, we talked about the yellow pages. I mean, you would advertise in publications or yellow pages. You never really knew exactly what was happening. Um, the beauty of online marketing is you're getting the data and you're understanding where people are coming from and what's working effectively in a way that we've never been able to do before. And that's exciting. I mean, and that means the dollars that you're spending hopefully are generating the best return that you can get for your business. So, Thank you. Hold, hold on, gang. I, I have a follow-up for Doug. Doug, you said what happens when the phone rings. Are you drilling down into the level of the quality of sales training and the ability to bring that deal in or is there something beyond that no we're I mean we are we are absolutely training on call handling we train okay. on inbound call handling and we train on outbound call handling and um, you know depending upon how people find us we you know we've got call recording set up you know people are advised hey you know you hear all the time today when you call a lot of companies you know this call is being recorded for quality assurance and so you're letting people know and then you're listening to those phone calls and and how people are performing and you're going back and you're coaching people up on, hey, here are some different ways to engage with the customer because it's all really about relationship building. Once that phone rings, now the relationship starts and how well do we do in terms of beginning that process of building a relationship with somebody right. who's just found us for the first time. Thanks, Mel Doug. Hey, Ryan. Uh, yeah, I think, um, you know, social media, I, I'll say it's like less, can be less direct. Um, it's kind of more, I'd say propping up our marketing, you know, it's like a secondary um, thing that people use to raise awareness as opposed to like going right after somebody with a direct mail piece. Although actually Facebook advertising, I found to be the targeting really powerful if you do need to do some kind of more like directed ads. But um, in general, I feel like an automotive Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube are, are bigger and, and Twitter we haven't had as much with uh, LinkedIn, maybe for recruiting would be great. And, um, uh, my opinion would be to engage people like friends. Like if you're on your Facebook page and you're posting coupons and it's not like an ad, like that's what you're doing repeatedly, you're probably not going to get as many followers. You need to, again, people are on social media, you know, for what's in it for me. So I just would remind people to try to engage them, you know, as their other social media places would. Uh, one of my favorite social medias was some radio station in some town that I never even listened to. Why? Because they posted really great pictures and really funny stuff. It was memorable. So, you know, be memorable in your social media. Um, and I'm a big numbers guy, so analytics, looking at your website and looking at the leads coming in from those, like how many people, you know, came from the Facebook page to the website. Um, and Facebook now has buttons so you can actually get leads, you know, measured directly from Facebook and their analytics. Um, and lastly, if you do need to do some advertising or like recruiting, uh, Facebook advertising and their targeting is so powerful. You can say this zip code, this age uh, has BMW as an interest listed on their page and just that person is going to see. I mean, having to cast out this wide net <laughs> you know, like through the yellow pages or a billboard just so that people who didn't weren't interested in it, but now you can go after them so directly. Um, it's awesome. So, Excellent. Thank you, Ryan. Todd? I would say uh, kind of in our in our closeout, uh, more of an example of social media. So I'd like to give a shout out to my son, Seth Westerlin. You are my hero and your whole class that is watching us right now. So he graduates in two months. Um, super proud of you, buddy. And uh, I hope I embarrassed you in front of your whole class. It's the power of social media right there. Hello, class. <laughs> yes. All right. <laughs> Glad to have you guys. All I have to say. That's it. Great. Thank you, Todd. Thank you. Glad we could help. Danny. So I, I agree with everybody to talk about social, the power of social media and all the different components of it, but I'll, I'll add something kind of like a bigger 50,000 foot view. The, the difficulty with social media um, is, not, is not whether Facebook is the right uh, tool for you or whether Twitter is the right tool for you. I mean, you, can, you can argue those in their impact. Uh, again, by uh, by the shop size, their growth, their growth potential, or where they're trying to get to, Twitter is going to start showing up in the search feed. So you can't write them out because there's actually a potential of actually having your Twitter account show up in the search. Um, it's being it's being 
uh, it's being looked at by Google bots now and has been for several years. So you can't write them off because they may end up showing up. But either way, the difficult part of social media, however you add it up, is scale. The problem is, is can the typical shop owner afford the level of social media to where it's going to have an impact? And what we've learned is that basic social media definitely has a purpose. It, it Google's Google looks at each one of your, your posts on social media and the interactions as a signal to just how professional business that you are. So not participating in social media actually right now is as harmful as not having a mobile friendly website. Google sees you, I might be exaggerating, okay? So <laughs> Google sees you as not participating in social media as a signal that you're not a professional business. And that can lower your overall quality score. It can lower your potential ability to get on the top of the search engines. Uh, so all these components are important. So at some level, you've got to participate. But realistically, to participate at the level that actually gets a lot of action, like what Doug gets and some of our clients, it's not a, uh, it's not a $50 a month, $100 a month, uh, a couple hundred dollars a month in put, putting basic posts, even though those are definitely great and you're getting good impact from them. But in order to see like the kind of level like, wow, I'm getting a lot of people coming back and I'm seeing a draw. It's almost like, it's just like its own separate marketing and we haven't reached the level of understanding of social media to separate out that this is a whole nother marketing component, not just to be piled in with our website that might cost somewhere between 200, 500, 800 to in order to really drive the traffic from it. The potential because there's so, it's like when we started websites eight years ago, there are so few shops doing it correctly these days that social media is open territory just for the people who want to put the extra budget into it and go after it. And, and there's people out there looking for a new place to take their car all the time. So these, this is open ground to, uh, to take over. And people like Doug and other companies like him are reaping the benefits. Uh, all I could say is when are we going to do part two of this? Because you, Danny, you almost left us in the lurch. It's like, wow, all these great thoughts. And yet I think, a million more questions that I could ask based on your, your final words. So thank you very much. Thank you, Doug Grills. Thank you, Ryan Clo, Todd Westerlin, and Danny Sanchez for being on the town hall. Appreciate yeah, it. You're very welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Good job, everybody. Enjoyed it. Really yeah, enjoyed it. Yeah, it was really great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Humble crowd. Awesome. Yeah. Really good. Thanks.